Supreme Court Janus decision. My name is Paul Gordon with Hit with a Brick podcast on iState.tv, and this is, uh, I guess, a, a mini podcast. We're going to talk about the Supreme Court Janus decision. Before I give my take, I just thought we would just take a little bit trip around the, I'll say the, the, the key essential sources for news on the interwebs and i'll say google search let's just look at how google search is laying this out so you have the cnn coverage and this nbc nukes coverage wall street journal on the top so you have supreme court deals major blow to public sector unions maybe beyond that and it's interesting uh cnn major blow and nbc major blow blow <laughs> i don't know did they get their marching orders we got to use the word blow it's all about blow msnbc blow uh fox news interesting fox news the conservative outlet supreme court sides with non-union workers in fees case <laughs> yeah there's no bias there uh n no bias in any of this and again cnn is shown cnn gets the youtube mention and uh, the article mentioned so they get two in they get one in videos and one in articles and then you can see the headlines here blow 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 uh a slate uh supreme court crushes okay they went beyond blow to crushes okay slate which is even even more left but uh let's see we got more blows got another blow here cnbc uh supreme court well that, you know that's a good I'll give CNBC. There's a good, nice, neutral title. Supreme Court rules in Janus labor union case. Hey, hey, that's 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 not too bad. I'm I'm gonna give them points for that. And let's let's just take a look here and let's see what uh, what the YouTube's is showing us. So here's the YouTube search for Supreme Court public sector unions. That's the same search search that I used on. On the Googles here, if you can see, Supreme Court Public Sector Unions. Mark Janus, Supreme Court ruling. I'm ecstatic. He's the guy. He's Janus. He's Janus of the ruling. Uh, so Fox Business gets tops, which I, maybe they got tops just because they got the guy on that was actually part of the ruling. Supreme Court deals major blow to unions. Oh, blow. Uh, CF, CBS News, interesting title. Supreme Court rules that public sector union workers can't be forced to pay union fees. That's that's actually not a bad title. Supreme Court decision could have grave implications for unions. There you go. Hey, RT. <laughs> RT America. By the way, you could serve it as it like RT. Bear in mind that headline. That tells you something about them. High court hears pivotal labor union case. Hey, that's that's a pretty deep, a decent one. A public sector union's collective bargaining versus First Amendment rights. Hey, Fox Business, that's not a bad, that not not bad at all. So some of these are not bad headlines, but most of them, by and large, are are pretty biased in one way or another. And you will notice that you're mostly seeing the liberal bias. Not so much the conservative. You're seeing some, but but not most. So the next thing I thought is I I just thought I'd play just uh, from the from the top three stories here just a brief uh, little bit from from each one here. So so this is Mark Janis speaking on Fox Business. Well, we were very optimistic. We we were hopeful that it would go our direction, and now yeah, you it were. has. It's been a, a very very. Uh, enjoyable you know, decision. I'm, I'm just ecstatic and, and fantastically excited about it. Looks like John Bolton. About five million workers, uh, government public sector workers, that now can make their own choice that they had not previously been able to do. Mr. Hibbert, I, I understand this is a much broader ruling than we were yeah. expecting. Yeah, Specifically, that's, that's pretty key here. The end of the closed shop and if you're a worker hired by the government or private enterprise, you have to opt into the union as opposed to being forced to opt out. Much broader. Yeah, that's that's a big thing here. It went way beyond uh, public sector unions. It touched on public and private sector unions. That's 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 pretty broad. Let's see what CNN has to say here. They're the second story. This is essentially, Poppy, a major blow to public 
unions. Blow. Uh, this law or this uh, opinion specifically pertaining to an Illinois law. So the court saying today that this Illinois law that required all public sector employees to pay in with this fair share fee into unions, they're saying that that law essentially violates the free speech of these employees who did not want to pay in. This was a case that resulted from a man, Mark Janice. He yeah. said, I don't want to pay in for mm -hmm. these fair share payments because uh, essentially unions use these fees that I pay in. I'm not a member, but they're using these fees for political speech, even though they say they're only using it for collective bargaining or wage disputes. I don't want to pay in. What's interesting to note here is that there are 22 states throughout the country that have similar laws that require public sector employees to pay into unions, even if they're not a union member. So this decision today really a blow to these public sector unions and this opinion has overturned a previous Supreme Court opinion a booed in 1977 that said they they overturned a 1977 ruling so the uh, starry decisis whatever they threw that out the window you know rule of law dude the Supreme Court has just handed this down is, a decision. Oh, I forgot to say. Okay, so now we're moving on to the CBS story. This is the third rate. It's third ranked story for YouTube for that for that key phrase. Involving unions. They've ruled five to four that states can't force non-union workers to pay union fees. This is seen as a major setback for organized labor. With us now on the phone is Jessica Levinson. She is a professor at Loyola Law School. Uh, so, Jessica, listen, uh, this was a public sector case. This was a public sector employee. So does this decision only impact public this sector unions? Key question. Good question. It does. It does. It's a decision that was widely anticipated because the court actually heard this very same issue. So you look at the breakdown there, you see what a surprise. Uh, the the toss up guy ended up being the decider, Kennedy, as as is often the case. So the four lefties went with uh, defending the public sector unions compulsory membership basically and the uh, righties uh, what a surprise they ruled against it and Kennedy the toss-up years ago decided the right issue. before Justice Anthony Scalia excuse me Antonin Scalia had retired and the court deadlocked four to four with the addition of Neil Gorsuch most people said I know how the court's gonna go it's gonna be five to four in favor of overturning these union dues for as you said public sector employees so th th this is a setback. I mean, uh, the way the unions are going setback. to look at this, Jessica, is as a setback. Am I right? Notice he had to catch himself. He had a, an air of, of neutrality. First, he said this is a setback. That was probably closer to what he really felt. But then he had to walk it back and say, no, 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 no. This is, this is what the unions will think. This is an enormous setback because, as we all know, in politics, money is power and unions are going to have less power mm -hmm. as a result of this significantly so less probably the argument was if you decide not to be a member of a union as a public sector worker then why should you have to pay the union any fees at all and a man named mark janis sued he said this violates my first amendment rights for 41 years we've understood that public sector unions can be required to pay so-called agents for 41 years, we've understood. You mean there was an arbitrary ruling 41 years ago, and now a new arbitrary ruling has gutted the arbitrary ruling from 41 years ago. Let's let's get it straight. Rule of law, arbitrary. Just just throwing it out there. So I want to get to this. Uh, just a brief coverage here. You know what? I'm not going to get to that yet. Dang it! I spoiled my ending. Oh well. <laughs> Pretend you didn't see that, everybody. Just nothing to see there. So I'm just going to cover briefly the NPR coverage here. In a blow to organized labor. There you go again with the blow. I think the story of the day is blow. It's all about blow. This is a blow story. In a blow to organized labor, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled Wednesday that government workers who choose not to join a union cannot be charged for the cost of collective bargaining. The vote was a predictable, a predictable five to four with uh, Alito uh, writing the majority decision. And I'm, I'm going to skip what 
uh, well, actually, no, I won't skip what Alito says here. So Alito says, under Illinois law, public employees are forced to subsidize a union, even if they choose not to join and strongly object to the positions the union takes in collective bargaining and related activities. Yeah, public sector unions, they have done far more than just put their money and their weight and their power behind looking out for the best interest of public sector employees. And let's just say it, public sector employees, our government employees who derive their incomes from government and thus have a vested interest in a, well, I'm going to say a larger government that pays people more money than even maybe it necessarily needs to. So <laughs> they that it's a it's a situation where you have the government lobbying against the interest of the private sector that's what public sector employee unions are they're government lobbying against the interests of the private sector they want to protect the interest of the government which is the government employees so we conclude that this arrangement violates the free speech rights of non-members by compelling them to subsidize private speech on matters of substantial public concerns. Now, the decision reverses a four decades old precedent <laughs> and upends laws in 22 states. <sighs> you know, if, if, if I'm not saying I'm against this ruling. Uh, I've I'm not really against the ruling, but uh, this ruling does show you the arbitrary nature of uh, the rule of law. There, there is no rule of law. There's only rule of power. And so what happened here was the quote-unquote conservatives, the Republicans, the Trumpians, whatever you want to call them, whatever they go, whatever name they go by this season, they, 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 they had enough power to get somebody on the bench that was going to rule in their favor. If Hillary had won, this would have been a complete. There wouldn't have. They probably wouldn't have even reviewed the case at all. They, the forty-one-year-old ruling would have been la recognized as the law of the land, arbitrarily, uh, to to the to the uh, objections of the four remaining or the, what would, would have then been the three remaining conservatives. You would have had five progressives on the court <laughs> under Hillary. And so all of the rulings would ref reflect progressive ideology. No, no arbitrary, no or non-arbitrary, no, no rulings based on a, a neutral assessment of exactly what the Constitution means and how it applies. No, it's all it's all going to be framed around your particular ideology and who can get their ideologue on that court. <laughs> and so that's what you're seeing here. So this is just a another case where rule of law is being exposed as a farce, as a myth. And again, I'm not against the ruling. The The bottom line for me with the, with the Supreme Court Janus ruling is, hey, freedom of association, you shouldn't compel anyone to be forced into any association that they don't want to belong to. So I'm not for any laws that, that, that protect unions in any way, shape, or form. Now, I'm not anti-union. Well, I'm anti-public sector union. I'm totally anti-public sector union. The idea of the government having a powerful political lobbying force is 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 appalling. It's it's it's. I mean, just on the face of it, how how are people even tolerating this? Even even countenancing this for other than if you're a government employee, and because we have so many, how many government employees do we have? You know, let's just do a Google search here. Percentage. How many uh, federal number of federal? I'm just going to go with no, no, number of federal. Let's see if they have and state employees. Let's see. Well, we have uh, 21 million people that are employed by federal, state, and local governments. 21 million. 21 million people employed by federal, state, and local governments. And that's a, that's a powerful group right there with uh, a lot of money, especially if that money is coming. You don't even have to lobby for it. You don't, you don't have to compete. 
you don't have to produce a product that that the that that people like that would compel them to want to buy your product. They've got to buy your product no matter what. And the product is is has I guess traditionally been more used just to try to get best be, the best benefits for public sector employees. But now it's it's being used to promote uh, everything from abortion to gay rights to a number of other progressive issues. And they're always taking the side of the progressives. I'm not saying, like, you know, when it comes to marriage, I, I don't really think government should be involved at all. But <laughs> I'm not going to speak on the abortion issue right now. But uh, and, and my issue isn't so much that they support or they don't support abortion. My issue is that they are using public sector dollars that are that are that are gained from public sector employees, whether or not they want it to or not, to produce or to to uh, to support political agendas that that don't even matter to whether or not a public sector employee is getting the best possible deal that they that they can now i'm i'm against them being able to lobby the government at all <laughs> in in a collective way no i am not for public i am not for government employees being able to lobby the government for benefits in their favor not at all if you want benefits in your favor i'm 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 going to be a bit of a devil's advocate here and pretend that uh represented representational democracy is the thing that's that's sound and reasonable let's just pretend it's sound and reasonable obviously you can tell i don't think it is but let's just pretend it is if it's a representational democracy then the people and, and by that i mean the people who are not employed by the government should be able to decide whether your services are worth the compensation, whether you deserve to have the raises that you're getting, whether you deserve to have the benefits that you're getting, whether you deserve to have these, these golden parachute pensions that are now bankrupting public school districts across the country. Yeah, yeah. You should, you should just dissolve public sector employee unions, period. So this is a, this is a major blow to the progressives. And I'm not, I'm I'm not gonna say that uh, that that's great. I'm, I I like a situation from my perspective in which I reject the course of enterprise model altogether. I like the scenario where neither camp is able to consolidate power too heavily and thus get their agenda too fully uh, advanced. Uh, but I will say that uh, I am absolutely all for the uh <laughs> the the competition i'm i'm all for them tying each other up and and i do see i see the progressives of having a lot of advantages even though the republicans are in charge such as they are with their various camps their coalition of the republicans i am i'm not 100 percent sure that uh, the progressives still don't have a decided advantage. So seeing the progressive lose some ground, some economic ground in terms of fundraising for elections, yeah, this pleases me. And if I felt like the conservatives had more power and were on the verge of possibly consolidating and being able to advance their energy, to uh, their, their agenda to the fullest, I'd probably be hoping that the progressives won some victory. So whoever is in the ascendancy that, as I see it, I kind of vote that the other side gets some wins. Vote? I don't vote. But I kind of hope that the other side gets some wins so that no one's able to consolidate. I, I, I would love a, a, a government that is that is deadlocked, that does nothing. A do-nothing government is, 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 is the best government. Next to no government, a do-nothing nothing government is the best government. And so now I want to... I want to come back to one last thing here, which unfortunately I showed briefly, but just this looming on the horizon that just came out today after this ruling. There you have it. Justice Kennedy retires from high court, giving President Trump another crucial pick. So, and this is going to happen soon because Kennedy's going to retire in July and now you know, Trump is definitely going to be able to pick this before the 2020 election. So there is a very good chance that what you will have on the Supreme Court are five strong 
conservatives. And I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just going to say, well, that's uh, at the at the lower courts, at anything below the Supreme Court, I believe that the progressives still have a decided advantage. I don't know how long that'll last. I think uh, Trump's making a lot of headway in that area. But uh, the, they're, they're beginning to lose a grasp on their control of the courts. And that's not a good thing, not from the progressives' perspective. And uh, there's a very real chance you could have five conservative justices on that court, which is for good or for ill. Just to keep things in perspective, folks, if you're a conservative and you're jumping up and down and you're all happy about that, remember this last Supreme Court ruling with the taxes and the online taxes and states being able to tax everyone, even if you're not originating from the state. If, you, if your customer is from another state, they can tax that transaction. Well, that ruling, there was one liberal justice, but there were three conservative justices that were on the dissenting. It was, uh, or the, or excuse me, uh, there was one conservative justice and three liberal justices that were on the on the uh, the the opposition to that ruling, they they didn't favor it. So this was largely, and Kennedy was on the side that voted for it. This was largely uh, a, a, a quote unquote centrist in Kennedy, and three conservatives, along with one liberal defector, who who actually it, it was the conservatives largely that ruled in favor of that. So. The progressives and the conservatives, they all have their, their pluses and minuses in terms of uh, things that they would do that would result in government leaving me the hell alone and and also in government in, 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 in invading my space more and more. But I'd still say I'm kind of okay with the conservatives chipping away at the power that the progressives have in the courts and in part because I believe that in all other areas the progressives totally dominate so there you go that is my take on the Supreme Court Janus ruling be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here iState and check out the site iState.tv and we'll see you when we see you have a good day